A very good morning and welcome to the Breakfast Club on Asake Online. My name is Siswagele Ntlovo. On today's program, we are going to be discussing the contentious issue of elections and political rights. With me in the studio is Mr. Ngobani Stole, and he is a legal practitioner at Abameli. I hope you find this discussion very informative and sets the path, your tone, for you to go out, register, vote, and change Zimbabwe's narrative. Mr. Stole, welcome to the Breakfast Club. Thank you very much. So, Mr. Tully, there is so much to go through, but what I would like to narrow down on today is, is Section 67, Political Rights. Please just give us a summary of what that particular section is all about. As you have just said, that uh, there is quite a lot to be talked about on that section. Um, look, I'll look at uh, Section 67, Subsection 1, Paragraph A and Paragraph B of the said section. And... Um, I will read it for the benefit of the viewers. It says political rights in subsection 1. It says every Zimbabwean citizen has a right to fee, free, fair and regular elections for any elective public office established in terms of this constitution or any other law and to make political choices freely. So this is what we are going to be looking at today. And uh, you know, um, I always say, and I've said it before, that uh, the constitution is supposed to be the bible of Zimbabweans and each and every Zimbabwean must understand what rights are there in terms of the constitution right when we're looking at political rights we are looking at uh, universal adult suffrage where adults have choices to go and elect an individual of their choice during an election day uh, uh, I'm, I'm usually a little bit uh, negative. Not that I'm supposed to be negative, but because I'm practical. If one looks at uh, this constitution, it's a document that came into force in 2013. And we've had several elections, right? Each and every time our presidential elections, you know, there will be a disputed result, right? And then we come up with these funny, funny arrangements. One of the funny arrangements is government of national unity, right? Well, it took us to a certain level, and then we had another funny arrangement of Poland now. You know, all these things are not in terms of the constitution, right? When you talk about universal adult suffrage, you are looking at individuals that have gone to vote and elected an individual. What happened to those results? Right? So, People will go out there and elect a leader. Somewhere along the line, whatever that has been elected disappears. Right? Well, these people that have gone to elect a leader have the energy to do so every five years. So that soon after that election, there is these other kind of funny arrangements. We have to ask ourselves, what should we do therefore? as citizenry in Zimbabwe. One thing that is glaring uh, is that uh, we have a tendency of going to cast our vote and we go home to sleep. We don't guard our results. We don't make it a point that the, or the process is fluid. And that's the danger that we always come across. Because whatever that happens now, happens in darkness and we have these funny uh, results and then we have these funny judgments that come into fall because at the end of the day whatever that people would have voted for will be manipulated along the line so the issues of accountability after voting and 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 become something that is subject to a dispute Okay, so I have various questions I want to ask, but before I ask them, I wanted to go back. So it says, every Zimbabwean has a right to free, fair, and uh, regular elections. Perfect. And to make political choices freely. Yes. From what I'm getting in your opinion, this has not been the case, in your opinion. Yes. Okay. Yes. And what is the way forward? Is there, is there a way forward? Is there something we have to just accept? And my other question was, has there ever been a country, Oktawa, any area where 
elections are not disputed? Is, last, is this not just part of the territory? Because even the states, America, everywhere, are my elections, somebody is going to lose and somebody has a fight. So is it not standard operating procedure, J, that there will be disputes? Well, I, I don't think so with our own case. Our, our case is a little bit different. You see, uh, our case, first and foremost, we will have a problem with the ZAC, for argument's sake, the composition of ZAC. It will be problems. Before you start talking about an election, you would see that one way or the other, they are partisan. The issues of impartiality of that institution becomes a ball of condition before you even go for an election. Fine, you will be dis there, there are disputes here and there, but generally, something will be on. Somebody will be able to say that, look, he might be aggrieved because he lost. But in our case, you will agree with me that when this constitution came into force, there were disputed elections for since time immemorial, right? And some of the people that will, will be saying that, look, whatever that you are asking for is not part of the constitution, right? So in, in Zimbabwe, we've got a tendency of talking about the constitution, which constitution, by the way, we've got a problem again in its implementation. So uh, I, I'll disagree that our situation can be equated to America. Our situation is different, right? As, as I can speak right now, uh, I've not seen any political party on ZBC for argument's sake, right? And you can go to court, uh, the court can make an order that uh, every other political uh, party should be given the space, uh, a space on ZBC. But believe you me, that is impracticable in Zimbabwe. So we might have a value-laden document, but the zeal to implement it is always problematic. That's why we have a constitution, before it is uh, operationalized, it has been amended. So those that have the power to amend don't have the power to make it live so that it's a living document. It is assisting Zimbabweans and the Zimbabweans can work based on this document. So I guess you answered. I'm not being negative just because I want to be negative, but I'm saying practically we have got these challenges. Your case could be as good as mine. Come 2022, we've got a problem. Before we talk about anything, already we've got Pollard, right? Which is another institution that is coming from the, from the blue and now is talking about something that is anti-election 2022, right? And some of these people will be saying, look, there is no need for an election, right? We must have some sort of an arrangement, right? So. Here we are, right? We might have this document, but I am saying, at the end of the day, it is the government that must push so that every other citizen in Zimbabwe understands what this document means. So that at the end of the day, there is free and fair play. And all these things will build up, up until there's an election. And because when we're talking about an election, we're not looking at the date of casting the vote. It's a process towards that date. Yes. So back to the point of saying, if I find that my rights are being violated in this particular instance, is there any recourse, is there anything I can do to remedy that situation? Interesting. Yes, there is. You can go to court. But how many times have people gone to court, right? So that uh, you have got a court order that is meaningless. When it comes to political rights, we are saying that each and every citizen in Zimbabwe must participate. We have to stand up as Zimbabweans. And we've got a tendency of, uh, uh, of um, you know, sitting back, waiting for political parties uh, to act in a certain manner. And then we, we sit back after an election, we cry foul, life goes on. Right, we'll have Pollard. You know, we always find very good terms, you know, to define nothing. You know, at the end of the day, whatever the, these other institutions that will come into force, purporting then to be moving the country forward, it's 
in contrary with section 67 subsection 1 because we are saying people have got a right to choose the leader of their choice but after that people have got uh, an arrangement which they don't know about very few people understand what Pollard is you see but it's there it is being financed by you know state coffers so we have to be very careful there. You mentioned two, uh, two very interesting points. You're saying we should stand up and rise and go in, in, in our numbers to vote. And at the same time, we're saying that there has been manipulation. Is there a point, how can we get people, how can we encourage people to get up in their numbers and vote, given the history? I mean, people have voter apathy, even the young first-time voters, um, 18, 20-year-olds, are being told that there's no point voting. So the youth already has an attitude towards voting that has been um, passed down by us. How are we going to do, how are we going to get people to get out and vote? You know, there is, um, there, there is need for an aggressive approach so that people understand why they should vote, right? Um, I, I remember uh, when I was looking at a, a certain clip where Malema was saying, in South Africa, it's funny. You have to ask people to go and vote, which is different from any other uh, or, uh, countries in Europe. You know, people believe they've got a duty to vote. But in South Africa, I was saying, you have to ask people, you have to give them T-shirts, you have to give them, you know, incentives so that they vote and vote for you. So that is where we have a, a problem. There is serious need of water education, right? There's so much resource that must be channeled by the government so that there is water education. We wait for 2022, but people, do people understand why should we go and vote, right? Is there any person who has bothered himself about going through the document which ZANU-PF is putting into four to say, this is what, if we get into government, this is what we are promising you, Right? Is there anyone who has bothered himself about looking at the manifesto of MDC for argument's sake? So that when they get, these people get into power, they account. So we, we know that if you get to 18, you have to go and vote, right? But what are you voting for, right? And if you have voted, are you able to then confront that institution that you have voted for to say, Surely, you promised us that you are going to create jobs, right? You promised us that you are going to build 5,000 uh, houses a day. Where are they? All those kind of things. So we, we have never, we have never bothered as citizenry to undertake and to look into those things, right? So that there is progress. And that's why we find ourselves always in a dilemma. You would have voted somebody, the moment you vote for these people, the next thing you can't even go near them. There are guns all over, police officers around them, you know, they have become small gods. There is no accountability. If you, account, if you ask for accountability, you are then arrested. Abameli must be always, you know, around you all the time. So these are the kind of things that we must work hard on. Voter education. Before you even talk about voting, do people understand why they have to go and vote? And now we will be told that, you know, in a certain area, people are supposed to be going there and getting, uh, you know, five kgs of millimil, you know, this and that and that. That's vote buying. Right? So if vote buying works, why aren't the other parties doing it? Or <laughs> they don't have the resources? I'm just saying, for example, yeah. for devil's advocate, to say, OK, if we've seen that there's a trend that works and it goes this way and we can get votes that way, what stops the other parties two wrongs, doing that? Two wrongs cannot make a rhyme. We have to confront that, that wrong. You know, at the end of the day, we are not saying that these other parties or any other party must do it. We are saying people should know what you are coming and promising them, right? So that if you don't do it, you account. And they should be saying, they should be able to say, look, this is what you have promised us. So why are you failing to, to do it? Mm -hmm. Because if, if I give you five kgs of millimil, surely if anything happens a, a year after that, 
can you come and say, look, uh, I, I want another five kgs? But I told you, I'm going to give you five kgs today. That's enough. So I would have uh, executed my mandate. So in terms of voter education that you are saying is going to be the driver, the time frame that we're in, end of 2021 now, by 2023, would it have kicked into effect even if we had the most aggressive a campaign possible? Because now you're saying, um, you mentioned that Africans, like South Africa, they want t-shirts, we want milli mil, we want this. It seems to be an African narrative. You get something, you give something, something in return. So we are not going to be able to hit the milestone of adequate voter, regis, voter education. So is this a long-term strategy? Are we saying beyond 2023, should we not start setting the systems to say maybe for the next 10, 12 years, because we have two, three generations that we have to educate on the importance of this, and it won't happen in a space of a year or a couple of months. What's your take on that? The first cut is the deepest. Mm -hmm. If we start tomorrow, right, by 2023, we would have achieved a certain uh, mile. First and foremost, I remember, if my memory doesn't uh, betray me, it started around 20, 2000. I was still young, but I was able to see and interpret what is taking place. And the more I look at it in retrospect, I see where things went wrong. You know, it started there about where people uh, learned that they have to be given food. Since then, you cannot call people to come uh, for a meeting without promising them food. They must see a truck loaded with millimil or maize going towards a certain station. That's where they will go and congregate. So it started then. Right? Up until we change that kind of a narrative, so that each and every person understands that, look, it is my future that is being determined by my ex. If these people are not going to accept or learn that, then we'll have a problem. And by the way, when we're talking about voter education, it doesn't necessarily mean that there's so much that has to be, you know, deployed in terms of resources. Right? It's not that you are asking that, uh, you know, 20 million or 20 billion be set aside for voter education. Right? The people that you are talking about, they really understand. In Zimbabwe, there is something very interesting. You know, the old Magogos out there, they understand what is taking place. Right? So, at the end of the day, you, you will know if, if you have been in, in, in this election processes you'll understand that the elderly usually go and vote it is the youth that are resisting it so all these kind of things those are the things that we have to look into those are the things that we have to push so that at the end of the day this constitution this section 67 is operationalized it's something that comes into for it's living Okay, just to round up our conversation, what type of activities would you, would you consider, would say, would you think would make an impact? Because we've seen that these online conferences, these wonderful things that we have, are not reaching the people that we need to reach. What, do, what would you have in mind in terms of voter education and rolling it out and having it at its most impactful? Um, this is very simple, right? Uh, when you talk about people coming to a certain station to come and get uh, five kgs of millimil for, for argument's sake. It is the same process that can be used. But at the end of the day, what we are saying is, you catch them whilst they are young, right? Like you rightfully say that it might cost us three generations, right? But at the end of the day, what, when are we starting? So that we are saying, then in the next third, third, third generation, this is what would have taken place. The more we delay it, the more the outcome is also delayed. So I was saying wherever we are right now, even if we're calling for them to come collect the t-shirts and whatever, we give them something, we teach them something, we have... Yes, Zach has got that duty, right? We've got non-governmental organizations that can chip in to do that. We cannot be feeding people out there all the time. This cost at policy surely doesn't assist us. I get five kgs of millimil this year, what's happening next year, next of next year. Then I'll wait for another five years so that I get another uh, bag of five, of five kgs. It is working for some people because it's the scorched earth police. 
it's a violation of this constitution. It's a violation of section 67. So, in the, in the fullness of time, we are saying that, uh, you know, we, we have to be aggressive. The more we talk about it, you know, some of these things, when we talk about it, people, they think, you know, you are being negative, you are being political, you know, I mean, look at these things, look at what is happening there. You are talking... For argument's sake, I was challenging somebody who was saying, look what is happening now, the roads are being uh, 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 reconstructed. And I was saying, come on. Surely, do you think this reconstruction of roads should be something that we will be screaming about? As if we don't deserve proper roads. Come on, we are stooping too low. Right? Each and every government that is on power, at the end of the day, we must assist it. As Zimbabweans. The problem with Zimbabweans, in my view, is that the moment you walk out of an election, you are now preparing for another election. So there is no time for people to work. The moment an election is done, this, this very minute, the next day, nobody is talking about government. People are still talking about being partisan. Look at what ZANU-PF is doing. It is now reconstructing roads. Look at, but no, 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 come on. ZANU-PF is the temporal bearer of state authority. You must make a difference between ZANU-PF as a party and ZANU-PF as a government. Today, it is the government of the day. We have to assist it. Right? So that any other party that comes in and becomes the bearer of state authority is assisted. So, I know it's a, it's a Tony... It's a Tony a topic and uh, my 15 minutes should be up anytime. <laughs> no, there's, there's so many issues that I would actually like to raise in the future. For example, you had mentioned that NGOs can play a part, but then you, you, see, or you see rulings that might prevent NGOs having any political say. But this is a discussion for another day because this political and election mode that we're in is just tearing up so many issues that people want answers to and yeah, we can save it for another day then. <laughs> Great. Um, would you have any last words for our viewers? Well, I, I would say that uh, we, we have a duty as, uh, as Zimbabweans, we have a duty as citizenry to really assist with water education, the political right. People have got a right uh, to go and vote and elect an individual of their own choice. Right? We have a duty for those that are enlightened to assist others so that we appreciate if we are not going to exercise our right to vote as citizenry then we've got a challenge going forward because we are unable to determine our future absolutely very few will determine your future and it won't assist for you to be screaming out there you know in a certain closet while these things are happening you know i, I think like I said, uh, I'll be very brief, and I've, I've managed to be very brief. Yes, you, you've kept up your word. Yeah. Thank you so much, Mr. Stolle. Welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, Thanks to your viewers. <laughs> Thank you. I hope you enjoyed the discussion I had with Mr. Ngobani Stolle of Aba Meli Lawyers. The discussion does not end here. We are just um, in the middle of an ongoing and continuous discussion leading up to election year, which is 2023. Talking about registering to vote, there is a promotion happening at the moment where if you are aged between 18 and 30 years of age you can go register to vote in Bulawayo and there is a promotion going on if you do manage to register uh, you can get a reward as it were of a choice to do your hair or do your nails or get a haircut or a shave this is for between 18 to 30 year olds so please follow our social media sites at site ZW on Twitter on Facebook and look up on our website for more information. That's all we have on The Breakfast Club today. My name is Siswagele Nklovo. Thank you so much for watching. Let's keep the conversation going in our comment section. And if there's any particular topic that you'd like to find out more about, do drop us a line, do drop us a comment, and we will try and, and get to discussing that with you. Thank you so much for watching, and it's bye for now. Mm -hmm.